Thank you, thank you. So I'm talking on the future of entertainment. It's quite a topic to cover in the span of a five minute Ignite talk, but you know, we've laid a lot of groundwork with the other wonderful speakers uh, before me, so I'm happy to give it a shot. But before we talk about the future, we need to talk about the past. Um, the uh, you know, entertainment's been around since the dawn of man. It's been about telling stories, about taking us out of our everyday lives, and about escaping our worlds. And at home, we have all this incredible access to entertainment now, today, right? So we have big screen TVs, sound systems, devices in our pockets, things that ultimately connect us more and more with different forms of entertainment. And of course, at home, we have gaming, right? That's why we're here. And of course, mobile gaming is the largest market share now in the gaming space. But gaming is becoming increasingly more and more important in home entertainment. We also have, of course, you've seen them all over South By, uh, VR headsets, wearables, new devices, uh, and new ways to engage with entertainment. These are all givens. These are all coming to our house. And of course, you could say that social media is a form of entertainment, that infinite scroll, watching all those videos, we all do it, don't, it, don't lie to yourself. We all watch this stuff, we find entertainment in all sorts of ways, not just in traditional means. But if you look at entertainment up in the dictionary, which I like to do, it says it's about holding audiences' attention, but is it more than just holding our attention? Is there something missing when we're talking about entertainment? And does entertainment in our house ultimately make us happier people? Does it make us more isolated? Uh, you know, we talk about wellness and mental uh, health and things that, like that at home. What does entertainment not give us? Well, when we look at out-of-home entertainment, we have connection, right? You're going to a movie theater. This is kind of the classic view of out-of-home entertainment. And it's about watching and experiencing something with other people through their eyes. But out-of-home entertainment is not just about cinemas. It's about going to the theme park. It's about going to a restaurant. It's about going shopping. That can be a form of entertainment for people. So expanding on the definition from content and things on our screens to things we can experience out, out of our house. And entertainment's evolved out of home. Um, and it's had to evolve because we have all this great access in our home. So you're seeing immersive experiences. You're seeing things that bring you out. And the reason it brings you out is because of FOMO, fear of missing out, if you guys don't know the acronym. And fear of missing out is a big driver to get people out of their houses, especially with COVID. We've found ourselves at home more and more. But there's also a platformization, this is a word I've made up, that's happening in entertainment. We talked a little bit about consolidation of the big media companies, but now what you're seeing is entertainment platforms for content to be held. And in those platforms, they're now imbuing those with agency and fan engagement. You think about Twitch, streaming, half of the fund is participating in the live chat. Uh, bringing your character into a world or engaging with your friends. Uh, the creator economy is a big part of the future of entertainment. We talked about Roblox and Minecraft. These are platforms that allow creators to put up their work in front of others and allow them to uh, optimize that content. So this is a really important new trend, which is brand optimization. This is happening with YouTube, with the creator economy. People are releasing these games, but that's not the game. The game is constantly being refined and optimized based off of the feedback loop that they're getting from their players, from their audience. And that's all being now collected and even optimized further with the use of AI. We talked about AI earlier, but not only is it about using AI on data, you're using AI to create. You're using AI to deliver new experiences. And that leads us to what I like to call the M word, because I believe it's way, way, way too overused. And when you Google the word metaverse, you get an image like this, which is abstract and means nothing. And please, let's not think of the metaverse as this. This is what the metaverse is not. The metaverse is not a headset. It's not a device. It's not a game. You have to think about it much, much larger. And a lot of people, I believe, misuse it, and it irks me to death. So really, uh, if you come up and talk to me, I'll tell you more about what I think the metaverse is. But it's, it's an architecture. 
It's a glue that's going to bring all these experiences together. It's a unified identity that you can take with you and understands who you are. So thank you very much. We got one more left. Thank you.